welcome to episode two of The Control Room. Um, these videos are kind of supplementary to um, some of the cover versions that Joel, Lincoln and myself have been posting recently. Um, in this video, uh, Joel and Lincoln are going to go through um, mixing the top line stuff, um, as in lead guitar and vocals. Um, if you've got any comments, please put them um, below and hit subscribe. Enjoy. Okay, hi folks, Joel here. I uh, just wanted to talk you through the uh, thinking behind the recording of the guitar part for Sultans of Swing um, that we did with uh, with James and Lincoln a couple of weeks ago. Um, I decided to, to do this on my custom shop Strat. It's a 56 Strat uh, with a roasted maple neck. I went for the maple neck because uh, it's uh, it's closer to, to what Knopfler alleged, allegedly recorded the, the original version on. Um, it's loaded with um, custom shop 50s pickups and a fat 50s in the bridge and uh, despite uh, a lot of uh, controversy about where, where, whereabouts, uh, what pickup selection Knopfler actually used, I went for the, the combination of the bridge and the middle pickup. Um, I used my, uh, my lockdown 2020-2021 uh, um, setup here, which is centered around the Line 6 Helix family. Um, and I'll just pull up, uh, this is uh, Helix Native, um, which is kind of uh, the, the digital version. Um, and there's a little patch here called Sultans, uh, coincidentally, uh, which is pretty simple. It's just, uh, it's a Line 6 stock compressor um, with a fairly polite uh, ratio uh, running into um, what they call the US Double, which is a twin reverb. Um, it's, it's on... Um, uh, as you can see, the drive and the volume is pro pretty much where you would never be able to play that um, uh, with, within miles of a few people. So um, this is the beauty of digital recording. Um, and then I'm running that through uh, an impulse response of a Celestian Blue uh, 212 with a um, Royal 121 and an SM57. Uh, running into a little bit of chorus, uh, which is the 70s chorus, which is uh, modelled on a Boss CE1. Um, there's not a tremendous amount um, that you can hear of the chorus effect, but it just seems to bring out a little bit of the, the high-end shimmer uh, which I that I was looking for on here. Um, and then it's into uh, Bucket Brigade, which is uh, the Boss DM2, uh, with a 100 millisecond um, slap um, a few repeats but nothing nothing that really gets in the way again it's all, all kind of uh, adds to the uh, the subtlety of it hopefully um, and then and then finally running into just a plate reverb um, again not not too long and not too too high in the mix but but just enough to um, to help me get through some of the uh, the the more complex lines um, so if I just come out of here um, also running into the just the front end of uh, this this wonderful plugin um, by Plugin Alliance. It's called the Lindel 80. It's based on a Neve um, 1073 um, console. Um, I haven't. There's no EQ or compression or, or gate or anything involved here. I left that for for Lincoln to do in post. But I've just uh, sort of nudged the uh, the preamp a little bit from um, from where it would normally be, which is there. So it's kind of pushing it a little bit to get a bit of uh, a tiny bit of uh, of compression from the desk, a little bit of overdrive from the desk. Um, but there, uh, that's uh, not not too much. Uh, nothing too uh, too drastic there. Um, but just enough to uh, to achieve. Uh, what I'm, I'm very happy with, with the sound. So uh, now I'm going to pass you over to Lincoln, who's going to talk you through how he made it sound like it sounds. Uh, Enjoy. Then we come to anything that's sort of top line, uh, which includes, let's go first for lead guitar, which is a top line thing. Um, anything that is there to grab the attention. And with this track, it's either guitar or vocals. They pretty much happen around each other. So you don't have to worry about one taking a back seat because they're musically they kind of intertwine really nicely so you can feature both really pretty heavily i'm going to grab some some lead guitar break bit here <laughs> So that's come from um, the Line 6 Helix thing, hasn't it? So it's got a lot of... It's very clean, and uh, it's got a lot of top end, um, sort of beyond which I think would be appropriate for that kind of sound. And there's some background noise, 
which if I start compressing it will become a problem so what I've done is put a channel strip on it where I've got an expander going fairly subtly that's the, it's not doing anything while it's playing and then it's got a very slow release but when it's not playing it's just to cut the noise out I've compressed the guitar because it's very expressive sort of um, line so I don't want to lose any other really quiet bits so there's a fair bit of compression on there EQ wise well it's just down to taste really I've taken some top end off this like really high stuff seven kilohertz and above not the sort of sounds that I'm that, that you really get out of guitar amps anything about above 8k is sort of um, not all that much use to me really um, I've also added all the way through you'll, you'll have noticed on drums and bass I've been taking four or five hundred Hertz out and that's because that's exactly where top lines want to live and you don't want to um, overdo that part of the spectrum in your whole mix so they've all been cleared out of the 500 Hertz and the uh, lead guitar can have it, it just gives it a bit more Compression has brought out a little bit more uh, more of the dirt in the sound as well, which I like. Um, it's side chained to the rhythm guitars so that they dip a little bit when it's playing. <laughs> which you can kind of hear, but it, it's in the in the context of the mix that just it, it's all little bits that help. So that's a lead guitar, lead vocal. Um, is this and now you step inside but you don't see too many faces so essentially it's a spoken vocal um i'm just got a channel strip on it where um and now you step inside but you don't see too many faces quite a lot of compression because it's spoken so the expression comes from the kind of subtleties of the overtones of the voice and stuff so in order to bring those out you have to sort of squish the center of the voice a little bit if it was sung and, and, and all the kind of attitude came from the melody and, and and whatnot then that's more to play with but so i'm trying to bring out a lot of the sub and overtones in the voice which is why i've taken a fair chunk out of the center of of joel's voice which happens around about eight nine hundred hertz so I've taken the center of his voice out, given some more bottom end from some more weight to it. And I've also done the same thing later on with this EQ, where I've driven it a little bit more. So there's a little bit more push, um, which should bring it, bring out more harmonic distortion content, touch more top end, touch more bottom end. And now you step inside, but you don't see too many faces. So yeah, that's... Coming in out of rain, you hear the jazz go down. So that's brought out, you know, essentially top end harmonic distortion, which is what I wanted. I put a compressor in there as well. And now you step inside, but you don't see too many faces. And that's going to um, cut through really well, which means I can dip him in the mix in terms of fader but he's still going to cut through. Um, he's also going into this thing I've set up, and now which is essentially a very short stereo delay. There's only 25 milliseconds one side, 35 milliseconds the other side. It's, it's, a, it's sort of an old technique, I think. It's just, it just gives a little bit more width and presence. And now you step inside, but you don't see too many faces. Yeah, so he's he's no longer just o just occupying the the very centre of the of the pan. He's kind of it's just bigger. And now you step inside, but you don't see too many faces. So that's a focus sort of sound. Coming in out of rain, you hear the jazz go down. And I could just make him a bit wider. 
final decision on how much depends on when I mix the whole thing. We'll do the whole final balance. I'm also going to put a little bit of slap on his voice. And now you step inside, but you don't see too many faces. That's just kind of the oldest trick in the book, really. It's, it, there's something about slap echo. It just adds a little bit of excitement um, to anything, to any vocal, really. Brings a little bit of rock and roll in there. Where's he gone? Oh, that's the... There he is. And the man, he steps right up to the microphone. Doesn't really affect the centre because it's a dual delay. And says at the last just, that just on the sides, but it just gives him a little bit more swagger. And the man, he steps right up to the microphone. And says at last just as the time bell rings. So, um... Uh, that's all the kind of forensic stuff. The rest of it is is just me um, fiddling with the context of the whole mix. So the next part of the process is I will have everything going all of the time and then just make adjustments, uh, which isn't really worth videoing because it's incredibly boring to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the kind of uh, the individual elements that I've chucked on there before I sit down and actually mix this thing. I hope that's useful.